Well, good morning, church. Good morning. So good to be back in the house of the Lord. And I just want to thank God for each and every one that put forth an effort to be here with us this morning. I pray that God will richly bless you. As always, we want to uh, welcome our Facebook family and friends. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We pray that we'll say something as always will be a, a blessing to you. So good to have Brother Butch and his uh, lovely wife Cindy back with us this morning. I told him if he would come, I wouldn't preach on him much. I'd go easy on him. <laughs> so, good <to> help. <laughs> so good to have Brother Tom Sanchez and, uh, and Lois with us and their family. Uh, uh, they're going to be our special singing. And if you've never heard them before, you're in for a blessing. I tell you, they didn't come to entertain us. They come to worship God with us, okay? So uh, I'm excited about this morning and what God has in store for us. Before we get started, I want to read this thank you card from the Ruth Allen family. Uh, they say, uh, to the White Lake Baptist Church, thank you so much for the pretty arrangements uh, for mom. Mom loved the church and she hated it so bad when she got when she could no longer come. But she's happy with Jesus now. God bless. Amen. Well, you know, the Bible says to be absent from body and to be present with the Lord, right? Yeah. So is that the saying of God? They're rejoicing in heaven this morning. So our devotional reading will come from the New Testament, the book of Romans, chapter 5. The book of Romans, chapter 5. I want to thank Tanya for uh, the Christmas lights she worked on. I got the church decorated so pretty. And, and uh, thank God for Brother Philip. David worked here, and, and Pat worked here about all day yesterday, installing the lights and the switches and so forth. Uh, I just want to thank each and every single one that whatever you do at the church, it might go sometimes unnoticed, but God sees it and one day God will reward us, right? When you find your place, let's stand as we reference the reading of the Word of God. Romans chapter 5, and I want to look at verse 8. The Bible says here that God commanded His love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. <laughs> oh, I simply love that. Mother took her little son, Billy, six year old, to the mall one week before Christmas. Little Billy wrote out a, a Christmas list a mile long, what he wanted, what he was expecting. So when he got up on Santa Claus's lap, he said, now look, Santa, here's my list, and you can see I've got everything detailed and very clear. This is what I want. So he started naming off to Santa everything he wanted, a new bicycle, new skateboard, new uh, rollerblades, a new dump truck, you name it, he had it listed. When he got done, Santa Claus went, phew, Billy, that was a long list, but now I'm gonna have to check to see if you've been a good boy this year. When he said that little Billy's eyebrows rolled up and he hesitated, he said, Santa, just bring me the rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Oftentimes we're like Billy. When we think about this unspeakable, precious gift that we can receive from God, we look at our life. We see, boy, how bad we've been. We feel like we're so undeserving. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Listen, God knew from the beginning to the end of each and every life. He knew the mistakes that we would make, the sins that we would commit, how bad we would be. Yet he chose to die for us. You know, I, I'm convinced that there's a lot of people out there this morning that believes just like little Bobby, they've been too bad, they've committed too many sins, that they're unworthy of this gift. But Jesus died. The Bible says that Jesus died that the world might be saved. Amen. It's a whosoever salvation. Amen. He died for the ungodly. And this gift that we oftentimes speak more so about during the month of December as we approach the, the day we believe that Jesus was born, we speak of this gift more so. This gift is the greatest gift that you could ever receive in this life. Amen. And it's freely given to all those that would come by faith and receive it. Yeah. Oh, praise God. That while he knew us, he loved us, and he died for us that all 
might be saved. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, as we think about these scriptures, Lord, our hearts are so humble. Thank you, dear God, for loving us in so much that you gave your only begotten sin. Jesus said there in John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this that a man will lay down his life for his friends. Oh God, I, I pray this morning that each and every one here this morning knows the free pardon of sin. They, they have that personal relationship with you, Jesus. But if not, I pray that the Holy Ghost would move during the songs, during the preaching of your word, that God, you would open their eyes and let them see their need for you before it's too late. Let them see this gift is so precious, Father God, that it cost heaven all that it had, that God gave his very best to redeem fallen men. God, at this time that you've allowed us to gather in your presence, may our hearts and minds be clear. May we take this opportunity to bask in thy wonderful presence, God, that we might worship you in spirit and truth, that we might worship you in such a way that we provoke the angels to look over the splendors of heaven and see what's going on. Because God, as the redeemed, we can sing a song that they know nothing about. Lord, we thank you for that precious blood, God. Thank you for all of your wonderful blessings that you bestow upon us daily. God, we want to be faithful this morning in praying for the, the sick this morning, the, the afflicted, those that's in the hospitals, nursing homes, the brokenhearted. God, I know that this is a time of great celebration, but for so many people that's lost their loved ones, God, their hearts are filled with sadness. So God, as you being the God of all comfort, the God of all peace, we pray that you would just intervene and help them, Lord God. Help us as we go through this life that we would fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. May everything be done and said here today. Go to glorify in you. And we'll be careful to thank you for it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Before our special singers comes, does the kids have a song this morning? Little boys, girls, you've got a song. I always want to give them the first opportunity. None of them? Okay. I think y'all's group is threes. What is it? Saved in three. Saved in three. Church, make them feel welcome this morning. Saved in three. Amen. Dave for giving us the opportunity to come up here. When he called us, we think a lot of Dave, so when he called me and, and asked if we would sing, you know, I was excited to say yes. Um, I know that 2020 has been a crazy year for all of us. Um, there's been some good and there's been terrible, terrible bad. You know, there's been some, a lot of bad, a lot of sicknesses, a lot of deaths. But as we approach Christmas season, you know, for us, it's celebrating the one who came to give us a chance to be, to be pain free, uh, you know, to be tear free. Where we're going, you know, there won't be none of that. And he gave us that opportunity. And so it's a it's a, a privilege to get to sing about him and for him. So yes. uh, I, my name is Jonathan and um, we are, we, we used to be called Fire. A lot, a lot of people might've heard us by that, but uh, we came to an agreement to change the name to Save in Three. And um, we thought, you know, had it not been for the three days that we, you know, we wouldn't have been saved. Uh, he was died, he died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb, and he arose. And so we just uh, we really liked it and stick with us. But this is my wife Chelsea, and uh, my sister Natasha, and my mother Lois. So uh, we're just happy to be here. We hope y'all enjoy. It. <laughs> This is a song I wrote probably about three years ago, a uh, Christmas song, and it explains, you know, what the true meaning of Christmas is.
This is what made it to be. But there's so much more to be stayed. The world wants to take it away. But the Savior was born and died for you and me. For you and me. What is the meaning of this time of year? What is the reason of all this joy this year? Is it the This is my favorite time of year. But what I love to do is worship the one who made it true. Jesus is your day. I just want to say I'm grateful to be here. Um, it's been a while since we've been on stage singing. It seems like forever, um, especially this year. But um, I'm so grateful for all my blessings, for my wonderful family, for my for my health, for for everything that he's done for me. Um, I think I'm going to try this song. <laughs> I think um, I'm forgetting like the second part of the first verse, but maybe it'll come to me. But I wrote this song. Um, when I was going through a very difficult, difficult time in my life, um, and it just, it just came to me. And God does that, doesn't He? He just, He gives you some, like through me, like with music. It's just how I express myself, and He's just, He's that's how we express ourselves over the years. And I'm just grateful that He gave me this song. Sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs>
song because it talks about you know Lord without you I am nothing you know because without God you know I can't get anywhere if I'm up here just singing on me it's not going to get anywhere so I always pray that when I do sing it's going to be anointed and I'm just thinking for all my blessings for my wonderful family that wonderful little boy sitting there singing with us so I need emotional so You can make 
Today and uh, it's good to see such a good crowd. Though yes. I don't know what your crowd's been running lately, but it's good to see everybody. And the Lord's been so good to us and shielded us in many ways. And I praise Him today. I praise Him because He's so real and He's so good to me. Amen. And I honor Him and I praise Him for His blessings. <laughs> Give me a C, maybe. In a little town called Bethlehem, so many years ago, they told him there was no room in the inn. Oh, but they had no way of knowing who they had tucked away. He was the Lamb of God who could take away. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, we'll save you pain and not butcher. That's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate everybody for, for uh, sitting with us, and we main thing is that if you can get help, that's that's our main thing. You know, uh, regardless of who's up here singing, the most important thing is you know trying to help somebody, and that's what's what we want to do. So, Merry Christmas, and we hope y'all have a good day. Well, church, that was an absolute blessing. Yeah. My heart's been blessed. Amen. 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 I'll say one thing for this family. I believe the whole family is blessed with it people that can sing and play an instrument and man I tell you that's that's wonderful. Brother Tom, I hope these little grandbabies they uh, accept the call on these days and preach God's word. I can just visualize myself and Brother Tom too sitting on a cube back in them one day. <laughs> but not only these babies. I, I pray for all these little babies, the children that they'll receive Jesus one day as their personal Lord and Savior and go on to live for him and serve him. Wouldn't that be a blessing? I tell you what, and they're they're precious to us. Thank God for these little kids. Okay, I, I'm not going to be long this morning, but let's go to the Gospel of Luke chapter two. <clears throat> the Gospel of Luke chapter two. This is a passage that oftentimes we we read or teach or preach about this time of the year, but it never gets old to me. Amen. <clears throat> The Gospel of Luke. And I'm going to take up our reading in verse 7 when you find your place once again. You've been sitting for a while, so we'll stand as we reference the reading of the Word of God. The Bible says here, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same countries uh, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And, and uh, this shall be a sign unto you, he shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, uh, peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass that as the angels were gone away from, from, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, or the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told uh, them concerning this child. And and all that uh, uh, here did wonder those things which were told of them by the shepherds. Thank you. You may be seated. May God add his blessings to the reading of the word of God. You know, it's it's been said that during the month of December, people give more than any other month throughout the year. People, uh, they show more love and more compassion in the month of December than any other month. I believe uh, people's hearts are probably more soft, more sensitive to really why we celebrate Christmas. And I know, friends, you know as well that uh, Christmas has become so commercialized, but you know, you and I, as God's people, as the children of God, we know exactly why we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate the promises of God that were fulfilled in Jesus and sending man a redeemer. Amen. Amen. And Jesus Christ came. Praise God. And I simply love this story that we have before us this morning. I want us to turn our, our heart and our thoughts to this subject, um, considering the things that were given. The things that were given beforehand, the things that were given uh, at the birth of Christ, and the things that were given later, even up until this day that we live in. Uh, again, as we think about our passage, considering the things that were given, 
the very first thing that we notice, if we go back to verse 13 and 14, that the angels gave a word and gave a song, didn't they? Well, you know, the Bible says that the shepherds was out there probably late that evening, maybe coming on up in the early morning hours. Uh, the shepherds was uh, watching over their flock, keeping them safe. And out of the blue here is an angel that brought forth a word to the shepherds that said this, that for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, amen, which is Christ the Lord. Now, you know, when you go back and you study Isaiah's prophecy uh, around chapter 9, uh, Isaiah was prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. And it would seem as though when you would read that, that he had already made his appearance. But Jesus did not come into this world until some seven, 700 plus years later. So could it have been that, that many people during that time, they probably thought, well, you know, we've heard this all our life that uh, the, the Messiah is coming, but we hear our fathers talk about it. We hear their grandfathers talk about it. And, and, and could it have been that they had lost sight or maybe lost hope or maybe no longer was even looking? But you know something, church? The angel came with the word that unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Well, you know, we too today, we hear this all the time about Jesus coming back for the church. You say, preacher, I've heard that from my parents. I've heard that from my grandparents. And maybe somebody here uh, this morning or maybe watching by the way of Facebook, you kind of lost hope. You kind of lost faith in that. But you know what, friends? God's promises is faithful and true. And listen, you need to be ready, be watchful for the moment you think not this Son of God will come. Amen. 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 Matthew 24, 44, Jesus says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as he think not, the Son of Man comes. Amen. And again, I go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. When Jesus ascended back into the heavens, the angels stood by the, the, the disciples. They, they said, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, will also come in like manner as he's seen him go up into heaven. Friends, listen, I am happy to announce to you this morning that Jesus Christ is coming back for the church, amen. Just as he came, as he promised, as the prophets prophesied, he is still coming back. He's coming back for the church, amen. And thank God be the glory. So you know what? As the angel appeared to these shepherds, their hearts was excited, filled with uh, uh, excitement, uh, their hearts was just bubbling over with joy. And then an uh, angelic host appeared. They began to raise their voices as they prayed that uh, the newborn king uh, that, that came into the earth, they raised their voices. They praised God. Amen. Oh, I simply love that. So many times I, I thought I wish I could have been there just to hear them praising God. Praising the earth's newborn king, amen. But you know what, friends? I read in the book of Revelation that one of these days when we're around God's throne, we, along with the angels, we're going to raise their voice as we worship God through all eternity, amen. Oh, I long for that. I thought, man, I just hear that beautiful singing. You know, we've heard some good singing this morning that has thrilled my soul, but can you imagine the angels raising their voices as they worship and as they praise God? And friends, as I said, I might have said this in our devotional, but the church is going to be able to sing a song that the angels cannot. The angels knows nothing about redemption. They know nothing about the blood of Jesus, but as for you and I, we have tasted of the Lord. We know that He is good. Amen. We will be able to sing a song that the angels cannot. A song in relation to redemption and the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And I'll tell you what, that's the only way that we're going to get there is through the blood. Amen. Without the shedding of blood, there is no hope. Amen. No hope. We're going to get there by the blood of Jesus. The angels gave a word. They gave a song. But then as you back up in her text, you'll notice in verse 7, Sister Lois made mention of this in her song, The Bethlehemites Gave a Stable. 
And this would have been a very, very busy time in Bethlehem because of the census, because of the people poured into the town to pay their taxes. As Mary and Joseph, as Joseph went to and fro trying to find a place that Mary could give birth to this precious child. Everywhere they went, no room, no room, no room. And of course, this would be symbolic. They would neither have room in their hearts for this little child. Isn't that sad, friends? It's sad to think about that, that people has no room. They go to and fro. Their lives are all cluttered up with the things of this world. But they have no room for Jesus. Amen. He's searching high and low this morning. Trying to find a place in man's heart. Will you have room for Jesus? Will you make room for him? Bethlehem might scare the stable. When everything else had failed, Joseph found a place. It wasn't a stable as we would think you would find in a barn. It was a cave that was hewn out in the rocks where they could put their animals up for the night. Imagine that. That's, that's the only place they could find that Murray could give birth to our wonderful Lord and Savior. It was a damp, dark cave cold. You know, I often thought, and probably you have too, that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, he could have came into this world any way he chose. He could have been born of the most wealthiest of parents. He could have been born in the most lurish length of ends in that day. Why did he choose to be born among the poorest of people? This little girl that had found favor with God, Murray, a virgin. <clears throat> that night that Murray gave birth to a Savior, again, it was cold, dark, damp. They, the, 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 the room wasn't filled with a lovely fragrance. It wasn't filled with family and friends that anticipated the arrival of this little baby. No, it was just filled with such a stench in the air from the animals that was all cluttered up in that cave that night. Well, why, why would he have chose to come in in this world like he You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that he suffered everything that you and I would suffer, yet without sin. He can relate to every man. Jesus wants every man to know this, that he can relate to your problems. Jesus knows how it feels to be homeless. There was a man that came to him one day that wanted to, to follow him. He says, the birds of the air have nests, the foxes have hoes, but the Son of Man hath no word to lay down his head. Jesus knows how it feels to, to, be, to go hungry. He knows how it feels uh, to be despised and rejected. He knows how it feels to be an outcast and to look down upon. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Everything that man goes through in this life, I might not understand it, but Jesus does. He's went through it yet without sin. Jesus wanted man to know that he can relate to you. He can relate to all your problems. And he says, come to me. Amen. Come to Jesus. Would you come to Jesus this morning and make room for him? And then again, we notice in verse 15 that the shepherds gave their time and testimony. Do you know one thing they didn't do after the angelic hosts left? They didn't say, well, man, this has been good. We're going to have a good night's sleep after all this excitement. We'll go the first thing in the morning. If we can, if we can, if we have time, we've got a busy schedule. Uh, I don't know. We might make it. We might not. They didn't say that, did they? The Bible says they went at that very moment. They went with haste. They could not wait to get to Bethlehem to come to baby Jesus. Oh, I would to God today that people would make haste to come to Jesus. Would to God that people would make haste. And yet, you talk to people, they'll want to put it off. They'll put it off on their to-do list. I'll come to you, preacher, when my schedule is a little bit lighter. When I have time, you might not ever have another day to get saved. That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. i tell you what, Brother Butch, we live in a day, and you know this better than I do, Tom, 
that men's hearts are just hardened. Yeah. Yeah. Men's hearts are hardened today. We don't make haste coming to Jesus anymore. It's like we can shrug up our shoulders. Well, you know, I'll come if I have time, if I can clear my schedule. You just don't understand. Don't understand how precious life really is. How delicate it is. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, one boasts not that self of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring. The shepherds went that very moment. They made haste. And I picture my mind, they ran. They ran to Jesus. And when they saw the little baby Jesus, and probably the little baby Jesus was just laying there smiling at them, they went back. And I would like to say the night that the shepherds became missionaries, because they made it known abroad. Wherever they went, whoever they come in contact with, they made it known to all men what had happened. And you know what, friends, as Christians, that is our responsibility and duty to spread the gospel to in every person we come in contact with. We are to tell them our personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. What is it, church? Have we lost that joy? Have we lost that excitement? Amen. I wonder sometimes, where's the joy? Where's the joy of the Lord? Nehemiah says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy is, is a, one of those fruits of the Spirit. And I wonder, church, have we lost our joy for the Lord? Amen. Have we lost our excitement? Have we lost the thrill in telling some lost soul that, yes, Jesus is born. And he went to Calvary's cross. And he died. That is our gospel message, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. The night the mission, the night the shepherds became missionaries. That'll preach, brother. Yes, sir. And then the wise men. We we know the wise men in the gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 11, that the wise men brought uh, gold and frankincense and myrrh. You know, a lot of times people think that the wise men were there that night when Jesus was born, and they was not. They were the very best that the Gentile nation had to offer. But when Jesus was born, his star appeared in the east. They made their preparations to make that long journey. They had to cross desert wastelands and mountains and valleys that was inhabited with thieves and robbers and murderers. They had to travel most of the, most of the journey by foot. They didn't get there until about a year, a year and a half later. They went to the king. They says, where is the king of the Jews that's born in Bethlehem? And that, that threatened the old king, didn't it? He was threatened by a little lady yeah. that would one day maybe overthrow his kingdom. Well, he says, go diligently and, and search for the child. When you found him, bring me word that I may too come and worship him. He also inquired, what time you seen this star that he could probably put a number on how the little child would be? So this is where we... When you do your own little investigation, you see that it probably took them a year, year and a half to get there. But then we, we see in Matthew's account that um, uh, the king made a decree that all the male babies would be destroyed in Bethlehem and around the Mount region in his attempts to kill Jesus. But friends, I'm happy to say to you this morning, the devil failed at that. Yeah. All through the life that Jesus lived, the devil tried to, to destroy him and he couldn't do it. Amen. Jesus went... You know something's interesting. At Bethlehem, south of Jerusalem, it's only around five miles. Five miles from the cradle to the cross. Think about that. He went all the way. Amen. The wise men gave their gifts. They seen he was worthy to receive them. And the Bible says they went back another way. And friends, listen to me this morning. If you ever have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, your walk will be different. You'll go in another direction. You will walk in the opposite direction. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, right? Amen. But then, friends, last but not least, we're considering the things that were given before and at the time and after. How the angels gave a word in the song. How the Bethlehemites gave a stable. How the shepherds gave their time and testimony. How the wise men gave their gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But last but not least, God gave his son. Amen. 
God gave His Son. We're talking about the spirit of giving, considering the things that were given. God gave His Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes upon Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, friends, what's so wonderful about that whosoever? It's a whosoever salvation. Not just for the Jew, but for the Jew, Gentile, or my kids. For whosoever would be willing to call upon Jesus, God would save you. Amen. God gave His Son. God gave His Son. Heaven gave its very best that we might be saved. Amen. You know, oftentimes I thought, you know, as as we give and exchange presents, what can you give Jesus? What what could you give the one that has has it all? Yourself. Yourself. As Christians, once again, friends, this is what Jesus wants us to do. In Romans 12, 1, 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your uh, selves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your minds. They may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect uh, will of God is. As Christians, friends, he wants you to give yourself fully to him. And as sinners and as lost people, you know what he wants you to give to him? He wants you to give your shame and sin to Him. And in exchange, He will give you eternal life. Now, isn't that wonderful? Amen. Yeah. I've always enjoyed buying and selling and trading, Tom. I've always, I've always, I've got some good deals and I've got some bad deals over the years. <laughs> I have been burnt on some trades. But then, you know what? You live and learn, right? Yeah. Sometimes I don't know if I'll even learn from bad deals. <laughs> best deal I ever made, church, was trading in my shame and my sin for eternal life. Amen. You see, everybody wants to be saved. Everybody wants to go to heaven. But until you come to Calvary's cross, you'll die and end up in hell. Good intentions will not get you to heaven. I hope so will not get you to heaven. Have you went to Calvary's cross? Have you laid down your sins? Have you forsook all for Jesus? Because that's what he demands. Yes. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Yeah. And you know, people say, well, you know, Brother David, I've tried it. I've tried the church thing. I've tried to live right. You know what your problem is? You've never fully surrendered. You've never come to that place that you fully surrendered. I know sin is a stronghold, and I know a lot of people's got strongholds in their life, and they try to break that through the energy of the flesh, but until you come to Calvary, you're not going to be able to break the penalty of sin. See, we're born into sin. There's nothing you can do about that. You can quit your smoking, drinking, chewing, lying, gossiping, cheating on your spouse. You can quit all of that. But you cannot change the fact that you are born into sin. That's who you are. And that's the reason why you do what you do. Until you come to Calvary, you'll never be able to change that. The blood of Jesus is the only thing that can set you free. I was in the bondage of alcohol for, for so many years. I was in the bondage of sin. Sin held, held me captive. And I couldn't break free. There's a lot of things in my life that I just could not break free from. But you know what, friends? I brag on the Lord Jesus Christ for this. So it was, it was in February of 2000. Uh, in the year of 2000, I came to Calvary. And I surrendered all. And the chains was broken. And the Lord Jesus Christ set me free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. That's what this precious gift that God wants to give you will do for you in your life. He will set you free. He will make you a new creature. Yeah. And you will become an adopted in the family of God, a child of God from that very moment. Would you come to Calvary's cross this morning? I want you to stand with me. Come to Calvary this morning. And receive the greatest gift that you could ever receive. Friends, could you put a price tag on eternal life? None of us could. None of us could. 
But that's what Jesus wants to give you. He wants to save your soul. He wants to give you eternal life. To those that's watching, by the way, of Facebook and YouTube, friends, I, let me persuade you today. If you feel like God's dealing with you, you know that you're lost and undone, you know that you need to be saved, would you just bow your head with me right now and say, Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that you you came and you died upon the cross and you was buried. You arose again that third and glorious day. And Lord, you said in your word, if I would be willing to confess and to forsake that you would save me. So Lord Jesus, I'm asking you right now to forgive me for all of my sins. Come into my life and be, the, be my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you from this very moment forward the best that I can in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, friends, it's just that simple. Can I say to you, the price has already been paid. Amen. The price has already been paid. Jesus says, come. He says, come. I pray today that you'll make the right decision, that you'll call upon the Lord and be saved. Until next Sunday, may God bless you.